She had Marvy Pooh, Frankie the Beverly, uh, Teddy P. And she said that her and Rickety James was just friends, but bitch, I don't believe you because you need more people. Hello, love bugs. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please hit the Patreon link below. And for a small $5 monthly fee, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before YouTube gets it, if YouTube gets it. Let me just say this right quick. They didn't already pick the book, so we know what the next book is going to be, okay? I think you'll like it. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure you'll like it because most of everybody be like, Nate, whatever book you say is going to be funny. Now, I don't know about that, but um, I appreciate it. Now, let's talk about Jan Gay's My Life with Marvy Poo After the Dance at eh, 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 Part 15. So where we left off in Part 14, you know, Jan had just got back in the house with the kids. Jan, Mammy said, uh, Teddy P called you. Jan was like, oh, yeah, okay, Mama, set that up. Jan already knew Teddy Pendergrass because she had a Judy named Barbara, not her mammy, even though her mammy probably was more of a friend than a mother to her, but she had a Judy named Barbara who knew Teddy Pendergrass's manager, okay, and they all, you know, met together, that would be Jan, Barbie, the manager, and Teddy P, you know, and she said it was pleasant. She said meeting Teddy P was fascinating, he was rough around the edges, but very charming. Of course, you wouldn't expect nothing less from Teddy P. She said his confidence was large and so was his stash of boogity sugary. So Jan was excited to meet with Teddy P alone. After all, Marvin Gaye was still up to the bullshit. What she thought in her mind that I thought was kind of crazy, but I think as a young girl, maybe that's what you think. But the way she looked at Teddy P, Teddy P was this, that he could have any woman in the world he wanted and he wanted her. Yes, he wanted you. He, he, he wanted you. Uh, yeah, on top of his pickle. But anyway, in her mind, she thought that if she hung out with Teddy P or she formed some kind of affair or a a a with Teddy P, then Marvin Gaye would uh, gain a certain respect for her and appreciate her, you know, that she is still desirable despite all those scratch marks and them saggy titties and those uh, pronounced freckles and disproportionate nose that he told her that she had. Anything so negative that he said about her, okay, nigga. Teddy P don't think it's negative. Teddy P don't think my stretch marks is bad. Teddy P don't think my my titties is saggy. You know, that's what she's thinking in her mind. And for real, for real, all he's going to do is, you know, hunt you real hard and send you back home to your husband. I mean, I don't know. I ain't got there yet, but we'll see. She is she going on her date with Teddy P, okay? But it's going to be in a hotel, okay? They ain't ready for the public, you know, affection yet. But she gets off the elevator to the floor that TP is on, okay, Teddy is on, all right? And she passes a woman who was clearly coming out of Teddy P's door and she was going in. And I guess Jan ain't had no problem with it. And I'm saying to myself, girl, you still think you special? You still think you special? Because he had another bitch come right out the room right before you, bitch. So, I mean, knock, knock, knock. Teddy P opens the door. Well, hello there, Jan. Jan said that she could clearly see that his ass was high as booty coo. Jan goes, uh, was that Latoya Jackson coming out your room? T.P. says, yes, 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 yes. She said he was high as shit, so she could damn near ask him anything at that time. Shit, you should have robbed his ass. He was but like, yes, yes, yes. That's my uh, friend. She, we're friends. We're friends. All of y'all's friends. All of y'all's friends. She said that the conversation between the two was very easy. She liked it. It was comfortable. I bet it was. What Jan said was, was while she was at the hotel, Teddy P. didn't make a move on her. One because he probably had the book of sugar dick. Two, it's the biggest trick of the book, the older trick, to make the woman be like, why you don't want me for? Why you don't want me? And then turn around and the woman be like, well, since he don't want me, I'm going to jump on him. Girl, that's the oldest trick in the book. He nope. says, I must apologize, but I have a meeting later. I must cut this short. But before you go, here's some gifts. Here's some gifts. 
It's empty because I ate them all. Jan said that the pot of donuts was good and strong. Jan said she drove back to her mammy's house confused. The next day, T.P. didn't call her, but he called her the day after that. Can I take you to dinner, Jan? Jan said, of course. She was charmed. They charmed each other. She was excited to be in public with T.P. Teddy Pendergrass says, Jan, um, I seen your boyfriend, Marvy Poo, driving around the block a couple of times. Jan was like, are you sure that was him? How did he know that we would be here? Teddy Pendergrass says, um, maybe he's following you. Jan says, no, Teddy. Marvin's obsessed with you. Teddy responds, no, he obsessed with you. Teddy Pendergrass said, look, all these other motherfuckers scared of your husband, but not me. Of course, two Aries, child, they look for a fight. They waiting on a fight. They waiting for an opportunity to fight. So I know, okay, that Teddy P was like, uh, if he wanted, oh, I'll give it to him. So I'm sure that she was very flattered by the fact that you know, Teddy P was willing to bring the smoke when it came down to Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye eventually returned and parked right in front of the restaurant, okay? Jan feeling uncomfortable. Can we leave? You better than me, bitch, because I wouldn't have left, okay? I, I don't care. He could sit right there the whole goddamn time in the handicap section. I don't give a fuck. He could, shit, as bad as he's treated you along the way, go with shit. I mean, they treat, I mean, you did fuck. Frankie de Beverly. But anyway, child. Jan so, asked, could we leave? Teddy P says, no problem. Jan says the next date with Teddy P was more intimate. It was a luxury suite with copio, copious, this bitch said copious amounts of potted donuts. It's empty because I ate them all. She said, Jan says she was ready this time. She was ready for her some more with Teddy P. She said that motherfucker was sexy. Jan close the door mm. you don't have to worry no more and she said that them two made love to each other for two days and two nights jan you you need to do another book g -N, you need to do another book a memoir of your experiences with these men because the way that you putting it out there is real dry i know that women want to know what your experience was with these famous singers okay girl you was dry you know this is very dry after the morning after hold on who's that frankie the beverly but anyway after the morning after teddy p says we got to keep this thing going Jan giggling in her stomach. Ah, he wants to do it to me again. Yeah, bitch. He want to keep you. Teddy P goes, I'll be leaving tomorrow for New York. Will you come with me? Jan said, I'm a mother. I can't come with you. I got kids. Teddy P say, bring them with you. Let me tell you something. That damn Teddy Pendergraph. I don't know why I keep calling him Teddy Pendergraph, but that goddamn Teddy Pendergrass is a whole beast. So not only is you going to uh, play uh standing husband to jan but you're gonna play standing daddy to the kids too jan said he made good on his promise so when he left new york and went to denver he flew her and the kids to colorado now while she was dead teddy is at the rehearsal and the phone rings and it's frankie de beverly yikes okay frankie de beverly say i know where you are and i know who you with okay you shouldn't be there he ain't right he ain't a good person, Jan. Jan stayed, ignored Frankie and stayed put. Mm -hmm. I bet she did. It turned out to be a wonderful weekend. Again, this bitch, what is, what is after the trifecta? What's after the trifecta? She had Marvy Poo, Frankie the Beverly, uh, Teddy P, and she said that her and Rickety James was just friends, but bitch, I don't believe you because you need more people. Not all okay. four of them men, girl. All four of them men worried about you? Oh, yes. That is stellar to all whores everywhere. Jan, well, I don't want to call her a whore because she ain't getting paid. By one, but one, her husband, I think. I don't know. But anyway, that's stellar. That's a stellar performance. Thing. According to Jan, Teddy P and Jan carried on like it was a true relationship. And according to Jan, also, she said that from time to time, Taco Me Marvin would show up to the different places where her Teddy P and the kids were, okay? That would be eerie to me. I don't know why she just didn't get a, no, cause see, if she got a, uh, what is that thing? Uh, um, order, a restraining order, 
then it wouldn't be no way for them to get back together. Because I know ultimately that's what she wanted. She wanted her family. Jen says that she was acting out because of all the frustration of dealing with Marvin Gaye's abuse towards her, mental abuse towards her. She so. knew that both Frankie de Beverly and Teddy B both had relationships with other women, but when they were together, she just enjoyed that time. Now, this is where she talks about Rickety Dickety James, okay? She says during his hottest tour at that time, that would be the Fired Up tour, she says she had developed a strong friendship. Lies. Lies. Rickety James said he was tearing your ass up, okay? I, hey, I'm inclined. Now, I know Rickety James was high a lot, but he know who he fucked, okay? But he really did have respect and love for Jane. And for Jane to just be like, oh, we was just friends. No, 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 no. don't you dare. Don't you dare. Rick James is probably the only one that really respected and loved your ass girl. So she said that the attention from these great men afforded her the ability to um, avoid a deep depression. Dick affords you the capability to not go into deep depression. Dick? I didn't know that Dick fixed depression. I didn't know that. Who knows? One day while she at home at her mammy house, Marvin Gaye calls, dear, we need to talk. Jan goes, I don't know, Marvie Pooh. Marvin Gaye says, I do. I clearly see what we need to do. A lot of making up. Allow your husband to visit you so we can start a plan of reconcile. What y'all think? Now, if you have not already done so, Please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. Remember this, the same people that you meet on the way up will always be. The same people that you meet on the way down, naysayers, my patron loves. Have a good one.